What's up you guys, welcome back to the channel. For those of you who are new, my name is Evan and I make videos about hot stocks, dividends, and options. So if that interests you guys, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so you never miss when I upload. Now in this video, we're gonna go over why NEO has been down so much in the last couple weeks or so, and why they actually went up today and whether this is kind of getting back to the norm of NEO going up almost every day, day after day, or whether this is kind of where they're going to start consolidating and maybe start growing like a normal stock. But before we actually get into it, I wanna know what you guys think of the dark theme versus the light theme on Robinhood and whether you guys enjoy it more on dark or on white like my normal videos. So let me know down in the comments which theme you guys prefer, the dark or the light. And also while you guys are down there, make sure you guys leave a like on the video if you guys enjoy these video updates every weekday. But with that out of the way, you can see today NEO went up right around 5%. And once they got up to around that 4-5% to area, they kind of maintained it throughout most of the day. And this is typical of NEO where they typically start lower and then they end the day a bit higher than they opened. And the reason I say this is typical for NEO is because this is usually how we see NEO reacting, where they open a bit lower or right around where they closed the previous trading day. And then throughout the day, they usually rise. But obviously in the last few weeks, we've seen them trading quite a bit different than that. Because looking at the one week chart, you can see they're down right around 13%. And this is mostly due to concerns that people had about NEO being delisted. And it wasn't only NEO, it was Chinese stocks as a whole. Right around this time, December 1st, was when there was a major scare about people worrying that NEO and other EV stocks like Xpeng and Liado might be delisted. You can see right on December 1st, right around market open, they were almost at $51. Then throughout this trading day, people kind of started worrying and especially towards the end of the trading day and people kind of panicked and sold off their shares. NEO dropped all the way down to $40 here. And then the next trading day, obviously they started climbing back up and they were green that day. But even since then, we've seen NEO pull back and they've been red pretty much the last couple weeks or so. Except for today, it looks like they're starting to climb back up and get out of this rut maybe. And to give you a better idea, here's the one month chart and you can see NEO is up right over 6%. And this is where they were climbing up to their highs. And they actually got up to 55.50 for their share price. And then since then, they kind of started pulling back down. Now this could be a combination of people being scared about NEO being delisted, even though that didn't quite start until right around November 30th or December 1st. But it could also just be that people are taking profits before the end of the year, maybe for tax reasons or just to secure some profits. So I don't really think there's anything too much to be worried about. But we're going to get more into depth on why they were pulling back the last week or so and whether this is going to kind of be their normal consolidation area and whether they're going to start rising from here. So now getting into specifically why NEO went up today. It was mostly due to NEO saying that they don't expect their growth plans to be affected by the looming shortage of automotive semiconductor components. Personally, I don't know how this would affect them too much, but obviously investors must have seen something and thought that this was positive news for NEO because we saw this was pretty bullish for NEO and NEO obviously went up today because they were in the green. And it says here, as of 2 p.m. Eastern time, NEO shares were up right around 4.8% from Friday's closing price. But aside from NEO's share price, a senior executive from NEO told reporters from China's Financial Associated Press that the company has been prepared for a looming shortage of automotive semiconductor components. But since then, they've come out and said that the shortage is going to have no impact for the time being. And this is on their plans to expand production amid the high demand for NEO vehicles. Now obviously this is good news for NEO investors because some news like this affecting the share price of NEO and pushing it up higher, even though personally I don't see how that would affect NEO's share price so drastically because they went up right around 5% today and I could see this affecting them a percentage or two, but to see them go up 5%, this must have been a pretty big deal and it must have been anticipated that it was going to hurt NEO and other car makers in China. It says that several Volkswagen plants in China were reportedly idle due to chip shortages over the weekend. And so because NEO isn't being as affected as these other companies, I guess that's news to push them up even higher than their share price was. And because of the pandemic, Early on in 2020, we know there wasn't a lot of vehicle sales being reported, 
and there wasn't a lot of demand for vehicles, especially in China. But since then, vehicle sales have rebounded pretty nicely, but the only exception is that these automotive semiconductor components haven't kept up pace with the sales of these vehicles. And so I guess that's why these other companies are worrying. But when Neo comes out and says that they aren't going to be affected by this shortage of parts, that's good news for Neo, and then we see their share price go up. Now towards the bottom here, Continental said in a statement on Friday that while semiconductor manufacturers have begun expanding manufacturing capacity, that added capacity likely won't be available for six to nine months. And auto investors holding NEO shares should read the executive's comments in that context. While there's no problem for the time being, it's something to keep in mind. And I definitely agree with this. If there is a part shortage, even though NEO isn't being affected right now, they definitely could be affected in the next 6 to 12 months. But to transition over to why NEO lost 20% of their value last week, and like I mentioned, a lot of it was due to the fact that there was worries about delisting, but there's also a few other reasons as to why NEO and other EV stocks were being pulled down last week. Now these losses kind of started last Monday, where NEO fell around 10% on that trading day, and it was actually due to a short seller research company that kind of went after Candy Technologies, making allegations that the company's reported revenue figures didn't reflect their actual independent third-party sales, but rather only movements between companies affiliated with Candy. And so because of that short report, Candy saw their stock fall around 29% that trading day, and they ended the week down 41%. And so it's kind of interesting to see these companies like Candy being affected by short sellers. And then that kind of transitions over to the entire EV market as a whole. Because we know a lot of these EV companies are over in China, especially Xpeng, Liado, and Neo. Those are probably three of the bigger known ones. And it seems like anytime one of them takes a hit and goes down in their share price, we see the same thing for the other two companies. And so it's kind of surprising to see Candy get hit. And then this affects Neo and the other EV stocks as well. And then again on Tuesday, Neo suffered another 10% loss. And this was when there was all that worry about the delisting of NEO and other Chinese EV stocks. Because this was the same day where we found out November deliveries for NEO, and they had delivered almost 5,300 vehicles, which was double from a year previously. And obviously they didn't go up because of this news, where typically we would see NEO shoot up in share price when news like this comes out where they report good numbers for their deliveries. Especially considering it was a record-setting month, and yet they didn't go up at all, they actually suffered a 10% loss on Tuesday. Now on Wednesday, they did recover a bit with a 6% rise, and this was also due in part to Goldman Sachs, which increased their rating from a sell to a neutral, and they also increased their share price to $59 on NEO. And looking at the fact that Goldman Sachs has always been pretty bearish on NEO, this was pretty good news for NEO, and because of that, we did obviously see their share price rise that trading day. But then again on Thursday, we saw all these EV stocks take another hit, because an analyst at UBS actually issued issued a note on Neo's rival Xpeng and they cut the rating from a buy to a neutral on Xpeng and then this affected Neo and Li Auto as well. And then finally, come Friday, Neo took another 5% loss because their competitor Li Auto did a secondary offering on Friday morning that resulted in a 6% drop in their stock. So I think to look at it overall, last week there was just a lot of negative news, not even specifically for NEO, but a lot of negative news in the EV sector that really did affect NEO, even though it wasn't specific towards NEO. So I think now that we're past this, and now that people aren't worrying about NEO being delisted as much, realistically we should start seeing NEO recover and they should start continuing going up like they were before. Now I don't know how much they're going to increase like they were before, maybe investors are starting to realize that they're not this stock that's just going to go up 100% month after month. And so NEO might not increase as steadily as they have been, but I think long term, NEO is still going to be a winning play and they should be worth way beyond what they're trading for right now. Whether those gains come in a short amount of time or if they take the next couple of years, NEO should be a winning play in the future. Now, for those of you who made it this far into the video, I wanna hear what you guys think of NEO down in the comments and if you think they're back on track with the gains that they were having previously or whether you think they're going to kind of consolidate around this $45 area for a while.
while. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Also, let me know your guys' opinions on the dark or the light theme of Robin Hood and which you guys would prefer. Lastly, if you guys haven't signed up for Weeble, make sure you guys sign up using the link in the description and you'll get four free stocks when you sign up and deposit $100. Also, if you guys enjoyed the video, make sure you leave a like because it really does help out the channel. And with that said, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you back here in the next one. Bye.